In this video, I want to introduce the approach to neurological syndromes. The approach to neurological syndromes, or how to get started diagnosing neurological syndromes. And recall that this word syndrome refers to patterns of symptoms and signs that occur with abnormalities or dysfunction of parts of the nervous system. When trying to diagnose which disorder is causing a neurological syndrome, the first step is to locate the lesion. Locate the lesion, or ask yourself, where is the lesion most likely? And the reason to start with this step is because different types of pathology tends to cause focal or diffuse dysfunction of different parts of the nervous system. The second step is to further shorten the likely lists of types of pathology by factoring in the syndrome time course. The time course. And in particular, the speed of onset or the speed of progression of the symptoms and signs that are making up the syndrome. Because it turns out that different pathologies tend to cause syndromes that occur at different time courses. The third step is to then factor in any particular risk factors that a patient may have that might point to a specific disorder that's causing their syndrome. By following these steps, you end up with a list of likely disorders causing the neurological syndrome ranked in order of probability, from which is the most likely to which are less likely. And we call this sort of list the differential diagnosis. Differential. diagnosis. And the differential diagnosis then determines the best strategy for tests and treatments, if any are necessary. Now this approach is exactly the same as it is for syndromes related to any, any of the other systems of the body, but this first step, the localization step, tends to be more involved for neurological syndromes than syndromes from other parts of the body because of the size and complexity of the nervous system. There are many different types of pathology that can affect the nervous system and cause areas of abnormality, cause lesions. And all the different neurological disorders can be organized in different ways into different categories of pathology. The way I like to categorize the different types of pathology is into the following 11 groups. But again, people do it lots of different ways. So whatever system works for you is just fine. My first category I think of as genetic. Genetic for disor disorders that affect the nervous system because of abnormalities of genes in the DNA. The second is called idiopathic, idiopathic, and that's a fancy word to say that we don't know what the cause is. This is an unknown cause, and many common neurological disorders are idiopathic. We don't know what's actually happening with them. Third is a category I call vascular, and that's from abnormalities of blood vessels, where blood vessels are not functioning properly and the circulation is not normal. The next category I call epileptic, epileptic, and these involve disorders that have seizures, which are a particular kind of abnormal electrical activity in the brain. The next I call mechanical, mechanical, and these involve physical forces causing dysfunction or injury to parts of the nervous system. The next I call autoimmune, autoimmune, which involves the body's immune system causing inappropriate changes to neural tissues. The next I call neoplastic, neoplastic, and this involves tumors that affect the nervous system. The next I call metabolic, metabolic. And this involves substances that are normally present in the body, but occurring in abnormal concentrations and then causing problems with the nervous system. The next I call infectious, infectious. And these involve germs or pathogens that cause abnormalities in the nervous system. Then there are nutritional disorders, nutritional. 
And these are caused by abnormalities of the diet, particularly lack of certain substances in the diet that cause dysfunction of the nervous system. And last but not least is a category I call toxic, which involves substances that are not normally found in the body that enter the body and cause nervous system dysfunction. So again, you can categorize the different types of disorders into different groups of pathologies that affect the nervous system, but this is a system that I find helpful for myself. Now, most neurological disorders will fall into one of these categories of pathology, but a number of disorders will actually have aspects that fall into several different categories of pathology. And I haven't come across any categorization system that's perfect so that there's no gaps or overlaps with all the different disorders. The last thing I want to mention briefly in this introductory video are some specialized tests of the nervous system for looking for the cause of neurological syndromes. Lots of routine tests, such as plain x-rays or electrocardiograms or common tests of the blood and urine, are often helpful for diagnosing neurological syndromes. But we also have a number of specialized tests that can be helpful for certain situations. For instance, we have a lot of imaging tests that we often just call scans for short that can be very helpful for certain neurological syndromes. And these scans go beyond just plain x-rays, including importantly, computed tomography, that we usually just shorten to CT or CAT, you may hear people talk about CAT scans, and magnetic resonance imaging, which we usually just shorten to MRI. And these two ways of making scans are particularly helpful for looking at the central nervous system tissues, the tissues of the brain and the spinal cord. These scans will also let us look at blood vessels and the structures that surround the central nervous system tissues. Next are a couple of electrical tests that are particularly good at looking at the nerves in the peripheral nervous system. And these are nerve conduction studies and electromyography. And since those are both long names, we often shorten that to NCS for nerve conduction studies and EMG for electromyography. And these tests look at the electrical properties of nerves in the peripheral nervous system, as well as skeletal muscle tissue. And abnormalities found with these tests can be very helpful for certain kinds of neurological syndromes. Next up is the electroencephalogram, which we shorten to EEG for electroencephalogram. And that's also an electrical test, but that lets us look at certain abnormalities of the brain, and in particular, the cerebral cortex, the layer of, of the brain right on the outside of the cerebrum. Another useful test is called lumbar puncture. I'll just write LP for short for lumbar puncture. And that's a test where we use a needle to withdraw some fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. And this fluid flows around the brain and the spinal cord. And by taking a sample of cerebrospinal fluid with the lumbar puncture, we can detect certain abnormalities of the tissues in or around the nervous system. And lastly, sometimes we need to take a small piece of tissue and send it to the laboratory. We call that a biopsy. And for neurological syndromes, sometimes a biopsy is helpful of skeletal muscle or of a nerve, or sometimes even the brain in certain situations.